Hello everyone. Welcome to this session by IntelliPath. As you guys must be aware of, Scikit-Learn is a super duper popular library that helps us in implementing machine learning techniques with Python programming language. In fact, the Scikit-Learn module is considered as the best when it comes to creating simple and more robust machine learning models using Python. So guys, if you are a Python programmer or you are looking for a robust library to bring machine learning into your programming skills armory, then Scikit-Learn is a library that you should seriously consider. This powerful library lets you simplify extremely complex machine learning problems. Now, if you are unaware about this library and have already joined us on this session, then guys, we assure you that you'll understand the nuts and bolts of scikit-learn by the end of this series of videos we are going to bring on this specific library. So if you haven't subscribed to the IntelliPath YouTube channel, then what are you waiting for? Enable both the subscribe and bell button so that you get updates about all the videos coming up next in this series. Alright guys, so to get started, what is scikit-learn? What it is? And why it is associated with Python? Let me clear all of these questions first hand. So guys, scikit-learn is an open source library in Python. So when I say library, it brings different set of its own syntaxes into the picture. I mean, consider it as a package which has different functions and a set of commands to get a few specific cores done. It was previously known as scikit-learn and was created in 2007 as a Google Summer of Code project by David Cornpew. Later in 2010, Fabian Pedroxa, Gail Varroquax, Alexander Gramfort and Vincent Michael of French Institute for Research in Computer Science and Automation took this project to the next level, releasing the first public version in early 2010s. In general, we praise Python because it is written so beautifully that there is no need to remember heavy syntaxes. It has quite a number of libraries which serve the purpose of doing cores beyond traditional programming. Like the things that you cannot do with C and C++ can be easily done with Python programming. For example, let's say you want to create data structures. You have to write codes from scratch in C and C++. But with Python, you don't have to do that. There are libraries to do these tasks, right? Now, that not only increases ease, but also reduces the amount of effort required to write codes from scratch. The same holds true for scikit-learn. Both Python and scikit communities are open sources. And the way they optimize the notion of programming is quite magnificent, guys. You don't have to actually write a program including thousands of lines. Instead, you can do it with as minimal lines as possible. People also call scikit-learn the father of machine learning in Python programming. In fact, it's actually one of the core libraries in Python. Now, when I say core library, what I basically mean is that it has extreme importance because without the library scikit-learn, it would make it very, very difficult for us to manually implement machine learning algorithms. Now, don't consider it as some sort of vague statement. By the end of this session, you'll yourself understand how simple it is to work with scikit-learn. And you'll believe that if it weren't for this library, that task would have been absolutely horrendous to do. Now, generally, this library is not used alone. There are few libraries that we will use throughout this session along with scikit-learn, such as NumPy, Pandas, and even Matplotlib. Basically, this NumPy library stands for numericals in Python. The pandas library is yet another amazing library that is going to provide us with more data structures to play with. And matplotlib is also a beautiful library specifically designed to let us visualize the data. So overall, when you are trying to devise a machine learning solution, you are going to use all of these in conjunction. It's not just that you can do machine learning by just sticking to scikit-learn. You'll need matplotlib to visualize your results. You'll need pandas to align and arrange your raw data because your machine learning model will only be able to process the data if it is well formatted. Also, you'll be using NumPy to carry out few numerical operations that go down the line while performing the machine learning task. But yeah, the major part of implementing machine learning logic and generating an output out of it will be achieved with the help of scikit-learn. So basically without scikit-learn's reinforcement, 
the process would become hugely horrendous. I mean, think of the notion of machine learning, guys. You are actually making your computer to learn a lot of things which it has not learned before. Now, you and me, I mean, all of us are cognitive people. We can pick up the learnings quite quickly and easily. But when it comes to computers, laptops, mobile phones or anything digital, if we boil down to the fundamental sense or the most basic sense, you'll understand that your machine only understands zeros and ones at the end of day. Now, teaching this very same computer to understand thousands or rather lakhs of data records and then making sense of them or rather predicting outcomes when the same sort of data is provided in future instances is quite a complex process, isn't it? Even if we talk about it, it might give you body chills, right? But thanks to statistics, mathematics and programming, basically with the help of these fields, we have managed to dumb down this very complex process to something that even freshers can get their hands dirty with and feel proud that they have gotten their hands on this magical wand that can predict the future when exposed to historic data. Well, that is quite awesome, isn't it? Now, coming back to the scikit-learn library, there are few things that every library should possess in order to become a good library to create machine learning algorithms. Those things are representation, evaluation and optimization. Representation is basically the hypothesis space, but it also takes into account the fact that we are expressing models in some formal language that may encode some models more easily than others. This is akin to the landscape of possible models. For example, three-layer feedforward neural network form one type of representation, while support vector machines forms totally different neural structure. Basically, here you pre-process your data and train your model, and you also visualize how it looks, right? Then we have evaluation. Evaluation is essentially how you judge or prefer one model versus another. It's something that you'll see as a utility function, loss function, scoring function or fitness function in other context. Think of this as the height of landscape for each given model with lower areas being more desirable than higher areas. Then the third one is optimization. So guys, optimization is how you search the space of represented models to obtain better evaluations. This is the way you expect to traverse the landscape to find the promised land of ideal models. The strategy of getting to where you want to go is what you can consider as optimization. So basically, this technique allows us to find out more about the classifier that we have created. If the evaluation function has got more than one optimum, then that model can be considered as well optimized. The scikit-learn module passes all these three criteria quite easily and you'll learn about this throughout further sessions. Now let's look into the prerequisites required for working with scikit-learn. Python programming environment, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas and Matplotlib libraries are the basic frameworks that you'll need while utilizing the scikit-learn library. We have already talked about NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib library. And we have also mentioned that scikit-learn is a Python library. That means to use it, you'll definitely require the Python programming framework setup on your system or a virtual Python environment such as Google Colab. SciPy is yet another library that will be required while working with ML models down the line. So guys, these are the basic dependencies that we will need to create scikit-learn models and get them up and running. Now moving forward, let's talk about the problem setting in machine learning. In general, a learning problem considers a set of n samples of data and then tries to predict properties of unknown data. If each sample is more than a single number and for instance a multidimensional entry, it is said to have several attributes or features. These learning problems fall into a few categories that depend on the type of data and its output feature along with the process we are making our system learn the data, right? So basically two major types will be supervised and unsupervised learning. The supervised learning will have a target variable, whereas unsupervised learning will have no target variable. Let's talk about supervised problems first. The first one we have is classification. In classification problems, samples belongs to two or more classes. And we want to learn from already labeled data how to predict the class or unlabeled data. 
An example of a classification problem would be handwritten digit recognition, in which the aim is to assign each input vector to one of a finite number of discrete categories. You can think of classification problem as discrete supervised learning where one has a limited number of categories and for each of the n samples provided, one is to try to label them with the correct category or class. Then we have regression problems. If the desired output consists of one or more continuous variables, then the task is called as regression. An example of regression problem would be the prediction of the length of a salmon as a function of its age and weight. Now, another type is unsupervised learning. In this type of problem training, data consists of set of input vector x without any corresponding target values. The goal in such problems is to discover group of similar examples within data and then group them. This type of problem is called as clustering. Uh, to determine the distribution of data within input space, which is known as density estimation or another type of problem could be project the data from high dimensional space down to two or three dimensional for the purpose of visualization. So basically these are the types of problems that we'll be discovering with scikit-learn. Now all of these problem types that we discussed about can easily solve with scikit-learn algorithms and we will be learning them one by one throughout this series. For now, I hope that you are clear with the basics of SciPy and ML problem setting. That's all I have for this session today. I hope this session was informative and interesting. If you have any queries, please feel free to drop them in the comment box below. And make sure you hit the thumbs up button as well. Until next time, thank you. Also, don't forget to stay tuned with IntelliPath YouTube channel for more updates coming down the line on Scikit-Learn library. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.